let's conclude and kind of create an overview of what have we learned about decision trees. Decision trees are really the single most popular data mining or machine learning tool. The reason why decision trees are so, so popular is the following. First, it is very easy to understand the structure of the decision tree, right? It's even in a sense easy to explain to someone why did we why the tree made a given decision, right? We can show them a series of splits and say because of these conditions, this is the classification that has been made. Decision trees are also very easy to implement. Both the training stage is not that complicated and also once we have the tree, it's very easy to use it for classification. So trees are also easy to use. Another thing that is important is <laughs> that they are computationally also very cheap in a sense that classification is easy. One caveat with um, decision trees is that it's very easy to overfit. So it's very easy to create complicated trees that, that are very deep and become too intricate and don't generalize well to unseen data set. Um, and what is also nice about decision trees is that they can do both classification as well as regression. So decision trees have many good um, the, uh, ex, ex, uh, properties. Another thing that decision trees are very useful for is what is called learning ensembles, right? Many times it turns out that it is better to build multiple decision trees, let, let each of the individual decision trees create its own prediction, and then, for example, you use these predictions as votes or you average them together to make the final prediction. So this is what it means that you learn an ensemble of decision trees and then you kind of take, take the individual predictions, average them up or somehow aggregate them to make the final prediction. So one method that, that does this um, is called bagging. The idea here is that we want to learn multiple trees over independent samples of the training data. Um, and then prediction from each tree um, is considered. We average predictions from all the trees that we have and make the final prediction. It turns out that in practice, this kind of bagging approaches work much better, especially if the classification or the prediction task is very hard. So the idea is very simple, right? We will have our uh, initial data set. We will create many random samples out of it, um, right? Let's call them D star one, D star two. This can simply be um, where we are sampling from D with the replacement. This will give us a new set of uh, uh, training data sets, and for each of these, we then train a separate tree, tree one, tree two, tree three, and then when a new example x comes in, we we make each of the trees to to give a to give a prediction, and um, and then we take the let's say the majority vote or the average to come out um, with the final prediction. So that is basically the the whole idea of bagging. There are a few interesting things how we could how we could use our planet infrastructure that we just talked about to do bagging. So let's look at this. The idea is that here, right, the tree induction be begins at the root, um, and that all all the trees are of the bagged model are pushed into the map reduce queue, and then all the controller kind of has to do is to do the tree induction over over a given uh, data set of samples, right? One thing that we need to discuss when the data set D star is very huge, how do we create subsamples of it? Here, basically, the idea is to use uh, hashing, right? So the idea is that I can take training records and I can uh, use hashing. I can use multiple hash functions. And for every hash function, I, this creates me a separate um, different uh, subsets uh, of data, where the idea is that records that hash into a particular re range, uh, we use them to learn a tree. Um, right? This means that this way the sample, the same sample is used for all nodes in a given tree. And um, no, the way I define it right now is that this is sampling without replacement. What we, what we want to do in bagging is to use sampling with replacement. So uh, the way we can do this is by using uh, multiple hash functions. Um, to continue to end our discussion of decision trees and of the machine learning topics, I want to also briefly com compare the support vector machines and decision trees and which of these two method should, methods should be used in a given case. So support vector machines are generally used for classification, meaning usually binary classification is the most common case. Um, they are used for real value, valued features, right? Because we think about a decision boundary in this Euclidean space. So they are not, for example, useful for categorical features like colors or um, weather types or something, right? 
SVMs are also very good when we have hundreds or hundreds of thousands of features, right? When you have lots and lots of features. So for example, for text specification, SVMs are really great. They also work really well when we have sparse feature sets. What this means is that most of our feature vector or most of our features take value zero. And what is nice about SVMs is that they have a very simple decision boundary. The, what we talked about is a simple linear decision boundary, which means um, it's very hard to overfit. So example applications for support vector machines are like text classification, spam detection, cases in computer vision when, where we are doing um, um, classification and so on. On the other hand, decision trees are for much, in some sense, more um, com building much more complicated decision boundaries. So decision trees are both used for regression and classification, having up to, let's say, 10 different classes if we talk about classification. Um, decision trees can handle both real valued and categorical features. Um, the most serious limitation of decision trees is that they can handle um, only hundreds of features, right? And only dense features, right? So when we think about decision trees, we think that maybe we have 10 or 20 or 100 different features, and for every training examples, all these features are, are filled in, right? Um, and SVMs, allow, uh, sorry, decision trees allow us to come up with um, complicated decision boundaries. This is good. On the other hand, we have to be very careful because Otherwise, we will overfit to the data, so we need to do what is called early stopping. Er, uh, some example applications for decision trees would, for example, be user profile uh, classification, where we can have user, we describe each user with a small set of features, and now we, we would ex ex want to classify these users maybe as fraudulent or not, and this would be an example for um, uh, application for decision trees. Another application would be, for example, predicting uh, what is called on the web page bounce prediction, right? Whether a person land, coming to a given page, are they just going to leave the page or are they going to make the next uh, click? In this case, again, we could describe every person with a small feature vector and uh, make the prediction.